Hello everybody, are we ready to fly today? I am so glad to hear that, but so am I. I am also glad to fly today. And where are we going to fly to, you may ask? Well, I had a message from Angelo Lalic, who wrote, Can you fly to Serbia, please? Hmm. Of course I can. Ryanair 186 can fly anywhere, anything, anytime. <laughs> so we will go, go ahead and do that today. So Angelo, we are going to do your flight today. We're going to go from Bucharest, which is L-R-O-P, L-R-O-P Airport, Bucharest. And that airport scenery is made by AF Low Sim. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but it's, it's right here at the bottom. And we're going to go to Belgrade, which is L-Y-B-E. And that airport scenery, Belgrade airport scenery, is unfortunately P3D default. I could not find any scenery at all for Belgrade. So... Sorry about that, but we'll do the best we can. And for flights, well, there was a, a Romania air flight and there was also an Air Serbia flight. Now, since you are from Serbia, I chose the Air Serbia flight, of course. And that is flight 143. And you can find that on Flight Aware by putting in ju one four three and that will bring you up all the information about the previous flights so angelo lalich we are ready to go into pre-flight and make ourselves a flight plan will you join me good Well, here we are in Flight Aware, and I'm looking at Air Serbia 143. And here you can see the other designators, ASL 143 and JU 143. This particular flight landed over 20 hours ago. It originated in Bucharest, Romania, and destination was Belgrade in Serbia. Now, it would apparently left on time but arrived 16 minutes late. Looking at the flight route, here you can see Bucharest over here and going across there's Belgrade there. Pretty straightforward flight. Looking at the flight altitude, they were at 18,000 feet but when you look at this it was an ATR-72 twin turboprop. So not exactly a jet. So I don't know what we will be assigned when we go into the flight plan, but we'll, we'll see and check it out. Here we are in windy.com and we're looking here. You can see Bucharest. Here's our origination point. There's the city to the south of the airport. Wind. It says here 14 minutes ago is variable at three knots. Ceiling and visibility okay, VFR. Temperature is a nice warm 22 degrees. Q&H 1023, no significant change. And if you look at the terminal aerodrome report, the TAF, it's pretty much the same. But it's got some, this one is saying clouds broken at 4,500 feet. Well, not too bad. Uh, if we are going to look at the runways, 
I did check earlier to see what direction the flights were leaving uh, this airport and they were all departing from this runway right here. So this was the departure runway and that would be runway 08 left. So we will probably get the same perhaps or maybe they'll assign us to this one I don't know but we'll have to find out. And when I checked to see where the aircraft originated from, here you can see these aircraft down, uh, these aeroplanes down here. These are all the turboprops, all the jets, they dock up here. Now we, of course, are a jet, so we'll dock at one of these points up here and make our departure from that. Whether we'll be departing from this runway or that one, that's a matter for ATC to decide. Going to Belgrade, here you can see the wind is generally coming from the east. Although here it's saying that it's variable at four knots, visibility 10 kilometers a mile. Now clouds are scattered at 4600. Temperature is a little bit warmer at 26 and QNH 1021 but VFR and the TAF is also is this one is saying wind is 120 degrees uh, so we may have to bear that one in mind if we do so if we're looking at 120 degrees then the likelihood is we'll be coming in on this runway up here which is one two, runway one two, right there. So that's what we have to look at and we'll see whether or not we get that. All right, let's go into sim brief. We are Ryanair and of course we are the famous 186. We're departing from LROP And we are going to go to LYBE, LYBE. And there's the alternate airport. We'll look at that in a moment. Here's our aircraft type. We are 737-800. We are EIENI -E registration and we are 186. Down here it's saying the scheduled flight time should be 1 hour 25. Departure is going to be on 08 right according to this. Okay. And arrival runway on 30. Well, well. We'll leave the altitude automatic to see what they give us. We are of course going to be full and we will have one ton of what? Yes, of course. Champagne and caviar. <laughs> Yes, indeed, all three, of course. Looking here at the route, here is the, the full route. It says the route distance is 350 nautical miles. Now, looking here at the departure, here you can see it's going out, coming around, and then there's a bit of a googly to get on into <laughs> Belgrade. Uh, whether we actually uh, routed that way or not, I don't know, but we'll see what uh, what it brings up. The alternate is this airport, which is Trianvo. I'm sorry, I mispronounced that. I know I do, but this is uh, this is the alternate that they're giving us. And it's at an elevation of 348 feet. Okay, let's go ahead and save this and see what we can get when we generate the flight plan. 
Well, here's the flight plan summary. We are number 186. There's our aircraft. Origin, of course, is Bucharest and destination is Belgrade. There's the alternate and we are going to be flying at 32,000 feet. Airtime, it's saying, is one hour and four minutes and there's the block fuel that we'll need. Here's the routing and the dispatcher says it's the planned optimum flight level. Okay, we'll, we'll accept that. Looking at the flight plan, here is where Ryanair 186 and right here, this is the flight altitude that we'll be flying at. This, of course, is the route. And right here, LRTR, that is our alternate, should anything go pear-shaped. We'll need to know that we are cost index 6. Here is the average wind and speed at our uh, assigned altitude. Going down here, the block fuel, this is what we have to make sure we have on board. The reserves, 3,106, that's 3.1 metric tons. Trip and taxi is 3,077, that would be 3.1 metric tons. We always round this out into whole numbers where we can, but no tankering recommended. This is the route that we've been given and we'll make sure that that is in the description box below the video. Here's the wind information. Uh, we've got 340. Let's look at 340. That Oh no, we've got 320 right here. That's ours. So we'll look at that and that gives us wind speed, direction and outside air temperature. If we run into any cloud, we definitely are going to need the anti-icing on because it is going to be cold outside. For descent, we'll need to know this information for 200, for 150, and for 10,000 feet right there. Here is the wind aloft information for our route. Here you can see our origin point right here. And you can see that we have these wind barbs and it looks like we're going to be experiencing some headwinds along our whole route. This, of course, is for flight level 340, which is 2000 feet above our assigned level. This one is for 3000, uh, 30,000 feet and but it's still, no matter which way we do it, it's still going to be a headwind. Here's the vertical profile for our route today. We're starting out here from Bucharest, making our climb. Here is our top of climb. And as you can see, we do have some headwinds. Not necessarily too strong, but strong enough perhaps to uh, make it a little bit more expensive on fuel. Top of descent, straight down then into Belgrade. This dotted line is the tropper pause, and we're not going to be anywhere near that, so we're not going to see any particular temperature changes. Okay, we've got the information, we've got our flight plan, so let's go into Navigraph charts. Here we are in Navigraph charts looking over this part of Eastern Europe and we go flights, new flight from Simbrief and bring that one in. And there you can see the routes going all the way in to land. Let's click on this one which is the origin, open the charts list we're going to pin the airport and we'll need the parking stands and coordinates. Looking at the parking stands, we'll be at one of these. Whichever one happens to be available when we open up the uh, airport scenery. We'll be using this 
departure. This is the instrument, standard instrument departure. And we'll pin that right there. Going over to our destination, we'll open up the charts list. We're going to need to know the airport, parking stands and coordinates. It's calling for runway 30. So let's bring up runway 30. And here we've got ILS localizer runway 30. And that will be us. So I'll pin that. I'm also going to pin the one for this just in case there is a change in the wind. Never know. Anyway, looking at runway 30, here you can see it's a bit of a zigzag. And this, I would imagine, is to allow the aircraft to descend from a higher altitude without having to do one of those spiral holding pattern things. This is the overlay chart for the arrival, which is what they're asking us to do. So a bit of a, an interesting dog leg going in from Donev. Uh, but we can accept that. I'm going to pin this to the items at the bottom as well. All right, we have all the information that we need now, so we can close all of these up. And we are now ready. If you're ready, let's go into the cockpit and get ourselves started. Ah, Angelo Lalic, do come on in and take your seat. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. It's sometimes hard for me to get my tongue around some of the Eastern European languages, but I do try. So, Angelo, you are very welcome on board Ryanair 186. And we are here at stand 112, 112 at LROP, which of course is Bucharest Airport. And it is a delightful scenery. It really is. It's very detailed. In fact, let me give you a little quick tour here. Looking out to the left of the aircraft, you can see the detail in those jetways. Just look at how detailed they are. Absolutely detailed. And if you notice, right over there, there are some animated people on the ground. So this has got a lot of detail added to it. And we have a couple of parked kamikazes, which <laughs> is good. And there's the stand that we're at. And over on the right, there you can see it says stand 111, which is the one to our right and the additional stand over at the far right there. And there are vehicles and more animated fellows down there. You see them? They're having a little bit of an animated chat. One has a clipboard. So that's probably our ground crew that's going to give us a pushback. Who knows? But it's a delightful scenery. And the frame rate is 23.24, which is very good considering I'm using three television screens all set at 4K. So we have 4K monitors and 180 degree peripheral vision and it's really very, very good. Now, the weather, I'm running Active Sky. So Active Sky is running also in the background. That also has a hit on frame rates, as you well know. But the weather today is looking very good over this area. So un unlike England at the moment, England is under cloud and it's raining today. It's raining. So 
Bucharest and Belgrade are the places to be today. All right, let's get ourselves started then. And you, this is how we start at 7.37. So we put on the start switch. We make sure that we have enough battery charged there. Turn on the fuel pumps and then we start the APU. And when the APU starts, it starts an engine that is in the rear of the aircraft. The low oil pressure light has come on and then this will start to climb. There it goes. This, by the way, is the start switch for the APU. The oil, low oil pressure light has gone out. Engine gas temperature is looking very good. And in a moment it will start to decrease and then it will level out and at that particular point a light will come on here to tell us that we have 115 volts available. There it is. So now we have 115 volts showing right here. How about that? Just like that. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to turn on the left and the right IRS. This is of course for our GPS. We'll turn on the galley, get the electricity running in there for the ovens and kettles. Turn on the emergency exit lights down the center aisle and over the windows. No smoking sign is basically a signal for the crew these days since no smoking is allowed on any aircraft anyway. And then the fasten seatbelt signs are now on. I'm going to turn the left and the right window heats on. I'm going to leave the probes off. The electrical hydraulic pumps are on now. And over here, the forward service hatch light is on and the equipment light is on, which are the air stairs, which are currently down and allowing our passengers to start boarding as you can. And yes, they are. They're queuing up, ready to come on board now. And over here, I'm going to turn on the APU bleed, turn on the recirculating fans, the isolation valve and the packs. And there it is. There's that rush of air conditioning going into the cabin now to freshen everything up. And then the last thing I do in this first phase is to turn on the steady light so those fellows down on the ground know that we're in here and that we know what we're doing. <laughs> right, now we're ready to program the FMC. And over here we check that the air rack is in date and there's no problem and that the programs are not returning any errors. So we go to our position. Our starting airport, of course, is LROP. So LROP. We are at gate 112. 112. Let's put that in. And it came right up with the gate. And yes, this does match the coordinates on the chart. So tap that and it puts it into the memory and then push that and it transfers it into the active box. So now we have our GPS set. Go to route and looking at the flight plan now, our origin is LROP and we are going to go to LYBE. L Y and B E. We are Ryanair, so that's R Y R, and we are number 186, so we'll put that in there. Go to the next page, and then we put in the first waypoint, which is Poland, P O L U N. So P O L U N. Then we go direct to ANASA, A-N-A-S-A. -A and then we go direct to Donev, D-O-N, 
IV. And that is our route. So now I activate that, execute it, and it's in. Go to fix, and we'll put in our destination airport because we need to put some circles on the screen around our destination. And that, of course, is L-Y-B-E. L-Y-B-E. And we need to have a four-mile circle. We need to have a 10-mile circle. And we need a 30-mile circle. Now we go over to Descent, to Forecast. And here we need to check the charts for our destination. And it says that transition level is set by ATC, but transition altitude is 10,000 feet. So the transition level, we will leave that as it is. But we are going to put in these three altitudes, flight level 200, 150, and 100. And the Q&H at our destination is 1020 1020 and the information for our descent at two at 20,000 feet it is 303 at 23 303 at 23 at 15,000 feet it is 314 at 14 so 314 at 1-4 and at 10,000 feet it is 3 at 5 3 at 5 then we execute that and then go to departures and arrivals go to departures now we need to listen in to the ATIS to find out what the airport conditions are and the ATIS is at 118.5 so I'm going to tune this to 118.5 and then I'm going to transfer it to the active by pushing that button Henry Coenda, Airport Information, Delta 1020, Zulu, wind 354 at 4, visibility greater than 20 miles, sky condition, clear, temperature 232.11, altimeter 1022, landing and departing, runway 8 left and runway 8 right. The FR aircraft say direction of flight, all aircraft read back hold short instructions, advise controller on initial contact you have, Delta. Alright, we know that the altimeter is 1022, so I'm going to set this to 1022. We also know now that the runways are 8 left and 8 right, but which one are we going to be assigned to? Well, that we don't know yet. So, we're going to need to tune into the ground and file and get our clearance for our IFR plan. So, we're requesting the clearance. Ocha Penny, ground, Ryanair 186, ready to copy IFR clearance to Nikola Tesla. Ryanair 186 is cleared to Delta, Oscar, November, India, Victor, Airport, as final. Fly runway heading, climb and maintain 8000, departure frequency S118.25, squat 0022. Ryanair 186 cleared to Delta Oscar November India Victor Airport as filed fly runway heading climb and maintain 8000 departure on 118.25 score 0022 Ryanair 186 red back correct contact ground on 121.7 Right well we are cleared to fly runway heading climb to 8000 feet and we are to squawk 0022 which we have squawking that now they can see us so the next thing we need to do now is to get our clearance to taxi so we know which runway we're taxiing to Ocha Penny ground Ryanair 186 with Delta ready to taxi IFR 
Ryanair, 1, 8, 6, taxi to and hold short of runway, 8, right, via taxiway, India, Bravo, Alpha, contact tower on, 1, 2, 1, point, 8, 5, when ready. Taxi to and hold short, runway, 8, right, using taxiway, India, Bravo, Alpha, Ryanair, 1, 8, 6. Okay, so we are 8, right, and that was the one that they gave us on our flight plan so we've got that the departure said is the Pollock 1 Kilo so go down to next page Pollock 1 Kilo and put that in execute go to departures and arrivals again and this time go to the arrival at our destination and there we're not sure. I'm looking now at the at my active sky and it's reporting the active runway in actual fact is runway 12. It may well be that but we were given clearance to come in on runway 30 so let's put in 30 we can always change it 30 and we're coming in on the Donny 2S, which is that. And execute that. Now we go to legs. And now let's see what we can do about the plan. So I'm going to switch this to plan view. Now I'm, here you can see we've got the plan view. This is our first turn right here. So now I'm just going to go through each of these steps and see how this works out. So there's the departure, then we swing to the right, going across now to the west. There's Anasa, there's Doniv, that was one of our big points. And here's where we start that curly cue. There it is, it makes the turn, goes back, makes the turn again and goes in to go straight in to the active runway. These dotted lines, if I just go out here, here you can see the, the dotted lines, there's the four mile circle, there's the 10 mile circle, and right there, there's the 30 mile circle, that goes around our destination airport. Okay, I'm switching back map now back to map and we're all set on the flight plan. Since we're departing on runway 8 right, the departure heading is going to be 079. So I'm going to put in 079 in our course heading here. I'll put it up into this, 079. I'm going to put 079 in yours, if that's all right. Can I do that? Okay, thank you, Angelo. Now up here, I've got to set the pressurization. So we're going to be flying at, at 32,000 feet. Okay, there we go. Our destination airport, the airport elevation is 336. That's close to 350. Now these are in increments of 50. So I'm going to go to 350 and that's got that in. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to put in the decision height at our destination, which is 533. So I'm going to turn this, and what it's doing is it's going to change this figure down here. So I'm going to make this 533. Good. Now that will give us the warning when we uh, get down to decision height. I'm now going to turn on the weather radar, double click this to bring on the data. I'll turn the terrain on your side, double click to bring on the data. Now I'm going to turn on the TCAS so that we can be seen. And things are looking good. 
All right, so far so good. All of our passengers are on board, so I'm going to bring up the stairs and close the doors. That is the electric motor of the stairs being brought up, they're folded up, and then they're slid into a compartment underneath the entrance hatch where they're out of the way. A really very neat little trick. Right, now I need to go to root and I need to perform the initialization. Our reserves are 3,106 and then the trip and taxi is 3,077 and that comes to 6,183 or 6.2 is, is to round out the figure. So 6.2, the reserves are 3.1, so 3.1, cost index is 6, the cruise altitude is 32,000 feet. Now the cruise wind is 317 at 31, so 317 at 31. Transition altitude, do you remember what that was? It is 10,000 feet, that's correct. So put 10,000 feet in there. Double click the zero fuel weight and it calculates everything for me. And then execute that. Go to N1 limit. It's 23 degrees outside, so we'll take the 23 degrees and put that in like that. We are not going to do any D rates or bumps or anything like that today. We'll go at flaps 10 on our departure. Double click this and it brings our center of gravity and our trim wheel of 4.70. Now I'm going to click once on each of these and it brings up the values for V1, rotate, and V2, our liftoff speed. Right, now I'm going to put the max speed into here of 146. There we go and everything is set. I'm moving up here and I'm going to turn on the yaw damper and flight continuity light went out. Now I'm going to put the flight director on here, flight director on there, press the V-nav, press the L-nav and we have green lights on both which means we have a good flight plan. Press the drop arm throttle and VOR1 Right Angelo, we're ready now to do our pushback and engine start, so let's get the checklist done. Fuel is all correct, windows are all locked, seatbelt signs are on, door lights are all out, MCP is programmed and set, takeoff thrust bugs are all in, pre-flight is completed. Rudder airline trim is free and cleared. Now, since we're going to need to go to runway 8 right, we need to push back. Our nose goes to the right and our tail to the left. And by the way, which engine would you like to start today? Number one or number two? It's your choice. Which, which would you like, Angelo? Left or right? You want to start the left one? We'll start engine number one first then. And now I'm going to put the anti-collision light on. Okay, we're all set now to do our pushback. So let's go ahead and ask the nice people down on the ground to turn our nose to the right and give us the pushback and then we'll start the engines. Cockpit to ground. We've been cleared for pushback and start. They want the tail to our left. Roger that. Ready to push. Tail to the left. Parking brake's off. Parking brake is off. 
Brakes released. And when we start to move, I'm going to switch this now to generator one. Brakes released, here we go. And now I'm switching the engine start switch on engine number one. The start valve has opened and here it is, it's starting to spin up. Then we're coming up 12, 13, there, oh it's going quite fast. And when it gets to 24 I'm going to bring in the fuel to the left engine, there it is. Fuel is now going in. I'm looking now for the engine gas temperature to ignite, there it is. Oh, it's going up. And now for the low oil pressure light to go out. And there it is. We're getting a good start. We should hear the engines any moment now. There, the engines have caught. Now I'm looking for 115 volts to appear up here to tell me I got, there it is. So now I'm going to switch this to engine number two and start engine number two. The start valve has opened on engine number two. And now the N2 is spinning up. There it goes. And when that gets Push to back complete, please. Parking brake is set. Looking for 24. There it is. Now I'm bringing in the fuel, looking for the engine gas temperature to ignite. There it is. There's going. Right, now looking for the lower oil pressure to go out. And it's gone out. There it is. And those people are really nice on the ground, aren't they? And looking up there now for a 115 volts to appear. And there it is. We have 115 volts on both. When this tick mark clears, then I know I've got balanced generators. There it is. So now I'm going to switch to the power coming from each of the engines. And now I'm going to turn on the air conditioning again, turn off the APU bleed, and turn off the APU. Now we're running on the main engines. My goodness me, look at this beautiful scenery. You know, I have to take, I have to take some uh, video of this. Look at this. Now that we've pushed back from the stand, you can see the detail in all of the stands of this. And the airport scenery is made by AFLO Sim. AFLO Sim. And look at the detail. There's animated steam coming up. There's the tower. Beautiful weather that we've got today. And there are a few kamikazes out looking for targets, such as us. Beautifully designed scenery. Really, really well designed. Oh, and there are birds. I see birds flying over there. So we'll have to watch out for birds and make sure that we don't get bird strikes. And look at the steam coming up out of the top of that. Really well detailed scenery. I now have the Navigraph charts active and you can see it here on your right. You can see where we are on the on the chart there and we need to go down to the end of runway 8 right which means we need to go out here go to the right and then come back to get to the active so let's get the seats in order brake is off three lights are on i'm now going to go to flaps 10 Generators are on, probe heat is now going on, anti-ice not required yet, isolation valves are all good, engine start levers, uh, idle detent, flight deck door is closed and locked, 
recall is check flaps we have green light stabilizer trim is correct auto brake is now going rto speed brake lever down detent ground equipment is clear so we can now turn on these three lights and we'll make our way out to the active runway okay are you ready angelo you're all buckled up good here we go then let's give ourselves a boost to get ourselves unstuck just move over here these people by the way they're all animated so we've got animated birds animated wind socks lights so there's a lot of detail a lot of layers on here Continuous 
position stroke is now on, all lights are on, starting the clock and watch out for the birds, all right, okay, moving out, making sure nothing is coming. But it's a lovely day for flying, now it really is a lovely day for flying. Alright, we'll make our, get ourselves lined up here. Alright, advancing power to N1. Toga button push, full power. We are now rolling. There's the military section over there.
time. Drink, eat, be merry, and I'll wake you up when it's time to land. All right, Angelo? See you in a little bit.
decision height is 50 on runway coming 
up alongside. We're doing all right. Fine, I have the runway in sight. Orbit 524, 
and stopping the clock. One hour seven minutes. Okay. around 
and see what we can do about parking right over here. Well, we'll come up into this stand right here. What do you think? Turn left here. Everything is good, everything is shut down. Okay, now, last thing. Fuel pumps off, ATU off, battery off, and shutdown is complete. Welcome to Belgrade. Well, Angelo Lalic, you said you would like to go to Serbia, and Serbia it is. So here we are, Belgrade, capital, beautiful city, lovely scenery, and this is P3D default, which I thought was really rather good. If I could only be here in person, eh? Well, thank you so very much for the request. And thank you for trusting me to make the flight. <laughs> Always a risk that, you know. And I'll hopefully see you again on the next flight of Ryanair. And everyone else, I'll see you all next week on a flight of Ryanair 186. Bye, everybody.